Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to ASIO. In the last video, I said we were going to start our little journey into asynchronous. And that was a bit of a lie because I looked at some things afterwards that I was that kind of were kind of bugging me. And I figured I'd just fix them off screen. But the more I looked into them, the more I was like, ah, this is actually kind of important. So I'm going to do a quick little video here looking at uh, some minor issues that I encountered. Uh, and also setting up for the next video so we're in a, a better place. So, first things first, these warnings suck. Let's get rid of them. They seem to be originating from these two headers, so what we're going to do is we're going to just cut them out here. We're going to put them, we're going to wrap them up with our other headers here. I don't really think it's necessary to maintain the ability to include these separately. This will be fine. And we also have to disable a couple more warning numbers. So slam those bad boys into here, and now if I build, I should see no more warnings. There you go, spick and span. Now that header stuff taken care of, let's take a look at a header of a different sort. So again, if I run this, grab this, I'll put it to stid out. If we look through the output, there's something a little sus here. It's a little sussy, Walt. This should be the end of the header. We got this double new line in here. And this looks like the beginning of the content, but that's not what we're getting here. Why? Why is it not properly detecting the content in the header? And I looked into it. I thought maybe there was like different kind of um, new line pattern or whatever. You see the pattern that we're searching for is this uh, carriage return new line pattern repeated twice. And I thought, well, maybe they've only got carriage returns, or maybe they only got new lines or something crazy like that. I don't know. But the more I looked into it, that's not the problem. The problem is a little more fundamental, and it's actually important that we understand what's going on here if we're going to use the buffers that ACO provides us with. So a few things that we really have to understand. First is that when you get the HTTP file, um, you, you might think, oh, well, I'm going to get the header transmitted and then it's going to transmit, you know, the content. But what really happens is you just get a single stream. It's not like you get one or, you know, two complete packets for this is the header and then the rest of your packets is for the body. It's just one unbroken stream of bytes delineated by that new line pattern that we see. There's no natural break in between the two. The second thing is when you're transferring data, you're not transferring it like one byte at a time. Like you don't request one byte and then one byte comes back. That would be very inefficient. You get packets and you know, they've got a lot of bytes in them. And so you're gonna get one packet and then you're gonna say, okay, read and get another packet in the TCP. And it's gonna get you another one. And then you're gonna get another one. And what's gonna happen here? Let me, I didn't really draw them correctly, but let's draw them more like this size. So you get your packets sized, you know, for various reasons based on your network conditions. And every time you get a packet, it's gonna check the contents to see what is the pattern that we're looking for here. Is this pattern in that packet? And if so, then we're gonna return from this function. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep reading in packets into that buffer. And so when it finds this pattern in the bytes, then it is going to return from that function after having read in packets into the buffer. If you were to output whatever is in the buffer, all that to see out, you're gonna get the header, plus a maybe a little more that you just got on there, just a little bonus for you. It's like you asked for some header, but you can have a little content, you know, as a treat. And that's what we're seeing here. There's just a little bit of content that snuck its way into the last packet before we detected this point here. And so what's a boy to do? Well, luckily, even though you know, just looking at the buffer by itself, we don't really know where the header stops unless we again do another search for this. We could do another search in there, but that'd be wasteful, right? Like, I mean, ACO already did that. Luckily, it also returns you the size of bytes read, and that size isn't the size in the buffer, that is the size up until your delineator. So what we want to do is instead of just reading the entire buffer out and calling that the header, we just want to read up until, you know, however many bytes they told us, and then we will treat the rest of that in that buffer, you know, as the content. So let's rearrange the furniture around this place a little bit. We're going to do our read inside of this scope, and we're going to create a little constant variable to remember the amount of bytes that are actually part of what we requested, the read until part. And now we're not going to do this loop. We're going to do it a little, a little fancier. We're going to create a std i stream that is backed by the receive buff as before. We're going to just create a temporary one and we're just going to read that 
into a just some kind of buffer for the, the data. We'll call that the std string header. And we will initially create it with the number of bytes so it doesn't have to be resized. Well, we need it to have that many bytes because we're going to read directly into it with like a basically a pointer copy. So we need it to have the correct size to begin with. And we'll just do header.data and we'll read in in bytes. There we go. So we read that into here and then we just got to write that out to C out. We did C out dot write header dot data header dot size. And there you go. Now, if we run this, we should now see it actually stop at the end of the header and not start writing a bunch of content in there. So there we go, moment of truth, let's scroll up and there we go. Content starts here, but seems a little sus, right? Just kind of starts with ED. I mean, it could be talking about ED considering, you know, the title of the page maybe, but I think more likely since before we saw it start with like a doc type, you know, like a tag thing. This is probably a case of we're now missing the beginning of the content. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense, right? Because we already read that into the receive buffer, but now we're using a totally different buffer. We've written to see out up until the end of the header. There's a little bit of content left in here. We're ignoring that and moving on with our new fixed buffer. That's not great. And I mean, the, probably the better solution is to use the stream buffer the whole time, you know, don't switch over. But I'm, I was using a fixed buffer just as to prove a point that you can, you can do things in a bunch of different ways. So now if we want to continue to prove our point stubbornly, uh, it's very simple. All we got to do really is go see out and you can output pointer to a stream buffer. So in this case, this would be the receive buff. And that just directly writes that into this stream. It just writes this buffer into that stream in a very efficient way without any extra copies. So it's actually really nice. So let's give this a spin and see if it is working correctly now. All right, we scroll up and we see end of the header. Yes, and beginning of the content, we have now not lost anything. And Bob is your uncle. Beautiful. So that is the little header shenanigans that I wanted to, wanted us to all be aware of the behavior of um, read until. All right, so some of you might now be saying at this point, Chili, this seems a little wasteful, like you're resizing, that you're filling the string with spaces and then you're filling it again, like you're writing over the same bytes twice. That seems wasteful. You know, I understand because I too have a micro penis and I enjoy micro optimization. So for the giga chads here, you can safely ignore this part. But for the guys like us with, you know, a little tiny pee pee, uh, let us now micro optimize this. I'll show you an opportunity to show you some dumb stuff from new, new C++. So instead of creating the string with a fixed size and initializing all the bytes, we'll create an empty one. And then we will do header dot resize and overwrite. And here's, this is a thing that uh, you may not be aware of, but it allows you to size it and write the bytes at the same time. So you don't have to write them twice. And then we can even be slick with it. Like we can take this function call, put it inside here. And now the return value is the first parameter to resize and overwrite, telling us how many bytes to reserve. And then in here, we're gonna receive two things. We're gonna receive a car pointer and we're going to receive uh, size, which I guess is probably size T. I don't know, let's do size T. So the second parameter is a function callback that is used to actually initialize those bytes. So I guess we do need to capture because we need to get the receive buff in here. And then we can do read from that into P n bytes. And then we have to return how many we actually initialized, which is gonna be the size that we created. We, we made it just the right size. So now we don't need this. And now we can write from that into here. So for all you micro optimizers out there, I got gotcha. you. Chili's got your back. Anyways, resize and overwrite. You learn something new every day. Moving on. So what we're gonna wanna do in the next video is basically compare this approach to an asynchronous approach. And so I'd like to pull them both out into their own functions that I can call from some central location and compare them. So we're gonna create function that's gonna return a response object. So we'll create a response.h. And we're going to create fetch url sync.cpp and also a .h file for that. 
So the response object is just going to be a struct with the URL, the header, and the content. In fetch URL sync, we're just going to put one function in here, and that is the function that fetches the URL in a synchronous fashion. And that looks like this, takes in a vector of strings, that's the URLs, and it returns a vector of responses. So you see here, we will, we want to support fetching multiple URLs, and that's going to be important for comparing synchronous and asynchronous, because if you're just fetching, if you're just communicating with a single service, there's really no difference. You're not going to get any super good benefit in running things asynchronous. It's when you start communicating with multiple, you know, servers at the same time or multiple connections at the same time, that's when async is going to start to really shine. Now, I'm not going to bore you to tears with, you know, the details of me typing this out, but I just basically pulled that function out into its own file here, fetch URL sync. This is all the same stuff that we've been doing, but I put a loop in here. So now I'm doing it for each URL and I just pulled out you know, the IO context, the resolver, and the SSL context from the loop, because that does not have to be created per connection. We get a vector of response objects in here, and we just loop through URLs and push into those responses for each one. And all we're doing is, you know, we're sending the same get request. Uh, we are storing the header now, and instead of writing it out to C out, we are just storing it directly into the response.header string. So this code becomes cleaner. And now when we do the repeated read and writing into our, uh, our fixed buffer here, uh, because we don't have C out, we're gonna create O string stream to build up the, the entire response into. And then when we're done, we are going to put that into the response object.content. Then we move that into the vector and we're all done. So we basically replace C out here with an O string stream. So now what we're doing is we are doing fetch URL sync, giving it uh, the URLs, and then we're going to loop over all those responses, uh, get the index of each item in the response range, and just, you know, output, ah, you know, here's, you know, URL zero, which is this URL, gave us this header and this content, etc. Now this doesn't work because I think our CLI options here, yeah. We specify this as a std string, but now we need it as a std vector of string. We can't initialize that with something like this, so we can just leave it as an empty vector. That should be fine. Now if we go back to main, it is no longer angry red. And uh, let's see if we can build. And when we run it, we should get the exact same output, and indeed we do well. I mean, you know. It's a little different formatting, but the, the header and the content are the same. So that's nice. Now, here's the beautiful thing about CLI 11. Now that I made that a vector, I can just jam a few URLs in here. So let's put in our old friend, the boost license.txt. Let's put CPP reference in there. So now we specify the same parameter three times and that will appear to us as a vector of three strings. And now we see URL zero here. Looks good. Let's see if we can find URL one somewhere. And here's URL one, and here is URL two. Now, do you see what I see here? URL one, header is fine. There ain't no content. Okay, that's not right. We got a little bit of a problem here, Houston, because we were reading this website fine before. That was our first test. So here's the trick. So what if in our little reading sequence here, a little reading rainbow, what if the data, the end of the header, was actually the end of the, the last packet? So in that case, when we're done here and we output the header, what's left, the buffer is just empty, zero bytes. And it's just a funny, funny little thing here. I don't know if there's a good reason for it or not, but um, when you insert a raw buffer like this into a stream and it has zero bytes, it fails and it puts the stream into a fail state and then all the subsequent operations also fail and you can't get anything out of it. You just buggered up your stream. So we should probably check to see if that thing is empty. If so, then we don't need to do this and we shouldn't do it because apparently it just screws everything up. All right, so here she is, URL one, license, there's the header, there's the content, and it is fully intact. Okay, so there's a little gotcha there to just be aware of if you're ever doing something like this. 
All right, now on that last thing, the, the whole point of pulling this out into its own function is because we're going to want a different one for async, and then we want to compare them. And the way we're going to compare them is by measuring how much time they take. So let's include chrono in here, and let's make ourselves a little bit of a shortcut because this is a little long for my uh, for my likings. So std chrono high resolution clock is now just CLK. And then we record the start time before we start fetching. And then after we're done fetching, we output how long it took, which is just, you know, the time point after fetching minus the start time. Simple enough. And now we can run it. And it takes a little while to fetch those three. There's got a little bit of a lag going on there. But if we look at the top, we see that fetching three URLs took 2.9 seconds. And there you have it. And now we are in a good position to, in the next video, start on our little asynchronous journey and do a little comparison while we're at it. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button. It does help, probably. And I will see you again with some more ACO.